Thank you. Benjamin Bouchard. Welcome, Thank you, Benjamin. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Ben Branchod. I'm with the Carpenters Union Local 94 here in Rhode Island. Um, I submitted written testimony, uh, but I just kind of wanted to paint a little bit better of a picture. Um, so I guess imagine you're the Attorney General or Matt Weldon, um, and a construction worker comes to you and says, I've I haven't imagined paid. being Attorney General a few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can, you can close your eyes if you want. So it's, it's a whole experience. So. Um, so a construction worker comes up to you, Attorney General Craven, and says, I haven't been paid. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> Attorney General Craven. <laughs> a construction worker comes up to you and says, I haven't been paid in three months. And, and you, who, who do you go to to file that complaint? You would go to their immediate employer. Um, some kind, sometimes that's, that's literally just some guy. Like it's just this guy that we call labor brokers or labor sharks, who, who are kind of like the, the pied pipers of worker exploitation. They kind of bring crews around to different construction sites and put them to work. And they're subcontractors, but not really. They're not registered anywhere. They're providing work to subcontractors. So it, it creates this really long chain. And, and in working with, with the Department of Labor and the Attorney General on cases of wage theft, it's it's very difficult to work your way down or up that chain. The, the blame either goes up or down, it, and nothing, nothing gets done. So it, it continues, because if you get away with something for so long, it continues. And to say that, that these general contractors have no way of knowing is, is incredible. I mean, there's, there's trailers on every job site. There's one trailer that, that the general contractor and subcontractor shares. They take bids from these subcontractors like, like somebody said, 40% less than a legitimate contractor. Like, like these people are bidding the cost of materials and, and then a little bit more. And it's for the general contractor to say we had no idea that this was a fishy bid is, is crazy. And they're, they're sharing these trailers and people on the job sites are talking to each other and saying that they're being exploited. And, and people from, from unions and other agencies are also telling these general contractors and developers that these companies that they continuously use are engaged in these practices and they continue to hire them. And, and the, the indirect employer thing, that, I mean, the, the, I, I don't think that that means, well, I referred them to you, so now I'm an indirect employer, so now I'm, I'm responsible civilly. Um, an indirect employer would be one of these labor brokers that I'm talking about, where it's, it's not the direct employer, it's, it's, a, it's a separate employer. So, so I don't want it to be spoken into truth that an indirect employ, employer equals somebody who refers somebody else, like, hey, I know a great plumber, now I'm responsible for wage theft. I don't, I don't believe that to be the case at all. Um, so I guess that's it. I'm in support of this bill because it, it holds contractors responsible and accountable. And, and not only, like, like somebody else before me also said, um, this bill, just by, just by looking at it, kind of eliminates the issue. It's not, even if a fraction of this bill were to pass, it would be like a saving grace to the construction industry. Just, just to, for the general contractor to know that they could be responsible, they'll look closer at those bids, and they'll look closer at what's happening on their job sites. They're the superintendents. The developers have project managers that, that are on a job site that know what's going on. The general contractors have superintendents that know what's going on. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Representative Cunha. Um, as a general contractor, I don't mind the bill, but I will say this, though. Uh, when I'm looking at different proposals and bills, there are companies who have maybe 30 percent of their estimate because they have the management fees. And, the, and like there's the management part of it, there's foreman, there's a big part of the actual general conditions before they even get to the work. So, and then we have another company who has two managers who are busy on the same project who can certainly take away a big portion of that and start getting into the actual work scope. So that's where I see a little bit of a discrepancy because not all companies, um, and I can tell what bids come in through, and I know that some companies are really paying really low labor, um, but it also, there's, um, in my defense, um, and I think for a lot of the general contractors, when, a bill, when estimates come in, 
and you see a company that's probably 15 to 20 percent less, and you kind of know the company, and you know that they're known for having like 15 managers on a project, which is totally not even worth it. It's not really necessary when you have a smaller company who has maybe two managers on a company who can be a little bit more competitive on their bid. So I can see both sides of the... Of the, um, so, of the so if it's managerial fees that are driving up the costs, then the general contractor would have nothing to worry about because it's not worker exploitation that's lowering the cost. It's a, it's a lack of managers, so it's kind of a... Sure, but point. they're not going to scope that out in the... They're not going to line item that for you. You know, they're going to give you an estimate of, you know, it's costing you $50,000, and this guy's saying it's, costing, it's going to cost you 30. So they'll hide that within, you know, within their programs um, and their fees. So, but yes, I can understand what you're saying. That was it. Any more questions of the witness? Thank you. Thank you. Randy